Santos is graduated in electrical engineering at Federal University of Minnesota, master degree in electrical engineering at Federal Center for Technological Education of Minas Gerais. Currently, he is a PhD student at the Federal University of Minas Gerais. In addition, he is a collaborating researcher at Gerência de Especialistas in Sistemas Eléctricos de Potência, GZ. His research interesting is about reliability in photovoltaic inverters. Do you have 15 minutes? Are you on the minutes? No, I was <coughs> Good afternoon, everyone. So, thank you very much for the presence here. And I'm Evo Trigo. I'm a PhD student at UFMG. And today I will present my work here, which is named Third Harmonic Injection Method for Reliability Improvement of a Single Phase Speed Inverter. <coughs> so, as you know, the photovoltaic system connected to the grid has been increasing in the last decade. So many researchers are uh, trying to, to study how the reliability of the PV system uh, in the electrical grid. So when you talk about uh, a PV system reliability, the PV inverter are considered the most fragile component uh, in a PV system. So inside the PV inverter, the semiconductor device and the DC link capacitor are considered the most components of failure. So many researchers in this area are trying to improve the reliability of those components here. So in our work, we will try to propose a methodology to increase the reliability of the DC link capacitor. But also, we are going to see how this methodology will affect the semiconductor device as well. So our focus on in our work will be in a single phase PV inverter. And the reason for that is because this topology here has a very specific thermal stress in the DC link capacitor. We have a second harmonic, uh, second oxidation uh, in, a, in the active power, which will be injected to the grid, and this will directly affect uh, the DC link capacitor. We are going to have the second uh, oxidation in the DC link capacitor, which is a very uh, thermal stress for the DC link capacitor. So uh, here we have a typical. PV system, single phase PV system, which we have the DC link capacitor here, uh, a PV inverter, a LCL filter connected to the grid. So if we consider this system here working properly, uh, the output voltage and the output current uh, can be represented by this equation here. As you can see, we are not considering uh, any harmonic component here, just the fundamental component. And when you multiply the voltage and the current, we can find the active power here. As you can see, we are not considering uh, any harmonic injection to the grid. Uh, the power factor is considered one. So as you can see here, we have um, an average power. And here we have the second oxidate, oxidation here. And that's the point that we try to reduce. We are trying to propose a methodology here to decrease this component here in order to help the, in order to improve the reliability of the DC link capacitor, okay? So we propose to insert a third harmonic component here, uh, and when you multiply the voltage and the current with this third harmonic here, we have the power, the active power by this equation here. As we can see, in the second uh, harmonic uh, part here, we, we, can, we add another term, and as you can see, uh, this term depends on the amplitude of the third harmonic. So if I change the amplitude of the third harmonic, I can try to reduce this component here. So that's the proposing of our work. So as you can see here, if you try to choose the phase angle equal to the same phase angle for the fundamental current, and choose the amplitude for the third harmonic equal to minus x plus um, the amplitude for the, the fundamental current, and this x is the percentage of the fundamental current which will be injected as the third harmonic. For example, if I choose x equal to 10%, I inject 10% of the, the first uh, com, uh, the, for the fundamental com component as the amplitude of the third harmonic. Okay? So as you can see here, uh, replacing the third the amplitude for the 
of the third amount here in the last equation, we can have the active power for this equation here. So as you can see, depending on the x value, we can reduce the second oscillation here. But as you can see, as much as increase the x value, I can reduce the second component here. But it's, we have a trade-off here. We cannot increase a lot the x value because we need to respect the TAD limit, which is less than 5%, okay? So that's our work. We will try to insert the third harmonic, but we will respect the TAD limit. And then we're gonna see how this um, implementation here will affect the lifetime uh, reliability of the DC link capacitor. And also check on the semiconductor device as well, okay? So uh, doing some math here, we have an analytical equation for the power losses dissipated in a DC link capacitor. And as you can see here, if you choose x equal to 50%, we have a reduction in 50% in of the uh, power losses of the DC link capacitor. But if you choose this value here, we are over, we are over the TAT limit. So if you choose x equal to 5, we have a reduction in almost 10% of the power losses in the DC link capacitor, okay? So here I will present to you how we can get the third harmonic injection in our current reference here. So here we have the control system and here we have the outer loop which we controls the DC link of the, the voltage of the DC link capacitor and then we have a PI control which gives, gives us uh, the amplitude of the fundamental current. So uh, here we have the inner loop which controls the amplitude of the uh, current from the PV inverter and since we have the f amplitude for the fundamental current you just choose the x value and then you multiply uh, the amplitude of the fundamental by the x and then we have the reference for the third harmonic here so in this part we are adding the third harmonic at the reference for the inverter current okay so in order to analyze uh, the lifetime evaluation uh, in our components here, there are some parameters that we are going to analyze. For the DC link capacitor, we are going to take a look at the hotspot of the, the temperature hotspot of the capacitor and in the power losses as well. For the reliability analysis, we are going to take a look at the lifetime consumption, which is calculated by this equation here, which is very used, used in the literature. Okay? What about the semiconductor device? We are going to take a look at the junction temperature, the fluctuation junction temperature, and the total power losses in the semiconductor device. For the reliability analysis, we are going to take a look at the number of cycle until failure, which is calculated by the Bayer model. Uh, there are many uh, lifetime modules. In this work, we are choosing the Bayer model to calculate the number of cycle until failure for the semiconductor device. <coughs> So for the simulation in our study case, we are choosing a PV inverter uh, with a 5 kilowatt um, of active power and we are choosing a 3 capacitor uh, with the manufacturer is TDK and for the semiconductor device we are choosing a IDBT with this part number and the manufacturer is the Infineon. Okay? So first of all we need to choose the X value, which is the X value that we're going to choose to insert the third harmonic component. It, so we vary the X value in our simulation from 0 to 5, and as you can see here, if you choose echo X equal to 5, we are over the TAD limit. So we cannot use 5. So you choose X equal to 4.5, because in this case we are uh, in the limit, we are in a safe area. I mean, we are in a TAD loaded percent So the first result will be the, cap the current in the DC link capacitor and here we have two results. The black one is the PV inverter working in a traditional operation just inject the fundamental current to the grid and the red one we have the PV inverter inject the third harmonic component. So as you can see here we can decrease the second harmonic in the inverter current in 5.36%. Okay? In this simulation here, we are considering the nominal operation of the PV inverter. So right now we are trying to understand how this uh, third harmonic component 
will behave with different active power injection degrees. So for this reason, we varied our active power from 2.5 kilowatt into 5, and then we analyzed how the inverter current will, uh, will affect uh, the inverter current. So as you can see here, for low, armon for low active power equal to 2.5, the TAD is equal to 4.67. So we didn't cross the TAD limit, and for uh, high active power equal to 5.0, you didn't cross as well, because the TAD is 4.66, okay? And right now we are going to take a look at the, the voltage at the DC link, and also for this G, for this two area here, injecting uh, 2.5 and 5 kilowatt, okay? So as you can see here, for low active power, we can reduce the DC link peak to peak voltage here in 4.92%. And when, when you are using active power equal to 5, we are reducing in the peak to peak voltage at the DC link in 4.675%. Okay? So, right now we are going to talk about the power losses in this component here. So, about the semiconductor device. We can see we just vary the x value from 0 to 5, and then we analyze how the power loss is behavior in the same conductor device. For the IGBT, as you can see, the power loss is increased with the third harmonic injection, and for a specific point of 4.5, we have a 3.7% of the increasing in the power losses of the same conductor device. For the uh, diode, we have an increase in 0.7%. However, when you take a look at the power losses in the DC link capacitor, you, you can see a decreasing of the power losses with the increasing of the X value. For a specific point of X equal to 4.5, we have a reduction in 9.1%. Okay? So now we are going to take a look at the temperatures of this component. For the